Okay, so tomorrow's quiz will cover the first two worksheets, binomial theorem and inequalities. So there are five problems, four points each. factor this. Synthetic division. So factors of 4 over factors of 1. 1 doesn't work, so shall we try 2? So what are the zeros of this? Negative 1. And what about from here? 1 plus or minus root 5? Yeah. If you use the quadratic formula. So 1 plus root 5. It doesn't matter how ugly the numbers are. And 1 minus root 5. Where would that be? Would that be here or here? Here or here? you got to put them in order this way. Well, root 5 is 2 point something, right? What is 1 minus 2 point something? Yeah, so it's going to be over here, 1 minus root 5. And then none of these are going to be part of the solution. And then how do I know it's going to go plus, minus, plus, minus? Yeah, because it's like this, right? Or if you don't know, then just plug in numbers, right? And then we're looking for greater than 0, so you shade in the plus signs. Good guy. And then just whatever you see on your number line, write that down, right? And then H, say what, girlfriend? H, X cubed minus, this looks like another synthetic division, so that's the problem. We forgot synthetic division, is that it? Why am I waiting for an answer? So we got to do synthetic division on that, so let's see, 1, 0, negative 7, 6. But this one, 1 works. So that can be factored as x minus 1, x squared plus x minus 6. Okay, so the numerator is going to be x minus 1, x plus 3, x minus 2. And the bottom is going to be x squared plus 1, x plus 1 quantity squared. So when you make your number line, what goes on the number line? Negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 2. Yeah, but well, Mr. Park, what about that? Well, what are the zeros of that? Plus or minus i. So where do I put imaginary numbers on a real number line? Yeah, you don't. That's right. So you don't have anything from there. Anytime, anytime you have imaginary zeros, that means this factor is always going to be positive or always going to be negative. So what do you think? Is this thing always positive or always negative? 
How about plugging in a number like zero? And it's positive. This is always positive. So it's like pretty much it's not there then, right? It doesn't contribute anything. So you can just ignore it pretty much. So you just look at whatever's left. Okay, and negative three is part of the solution. Negative one is not, and one and two are. How do I know this one's gonna be plus? Without even thinking. Because the leading coefficients are positive. Two came from this factor, odd power, change. <coughs> one came from this factor, odd power, change. Negative one came from this factor, even power stay the same. Negative three came from that factor, odd power, change. Or if you don't know anything, just plug in numbers. And then we're looking for greater than or equal to zero, so we shade in the pluses also. Okay, and that's all the questions? No, number two. So, number two, you're just going backwards. See, so I give you the answer, you have to write the problem. Well, just go backwards then. So number two, what I would do is I would make a number line, because that's, that's what we do, right? And then draw the number <coughs> line for this. What do we have? Negative four, and then negative two and zero, and then one and three. So negative two is included, but not zero. And then one is included, but three is not, and so that's your number line. See how, just go backwards. So, in your, in your, how do I know, first of all, it's going to be a fraction? Because some of them are included and some of them are not. So, which, is, which are the ones in the numerator? The ones that are included, right? So this is going to be x plus 4, right? Because that's how you get a 0 of negative 4. And then x plus 2, and then x minus 1. And the ones that are not included, those are going to be in the denominator because it makes it undefined. So that's going to be x and x minus 3. How many get points do I get for that tomorrow, Mr. Park? One. Five. <laughs> no, it's only worth four points, so I would say zero. Come on, if you don't know that, just go home. And cook rice. Now you got to, like, okay, at least tell me, is it going to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to? How do, I, how do you know which one it is? 50-50 chance. How do I know it's greater than or equal to? Because if the leading coefficients are positive, then the one over here can be positive. And if you're shading it in, then you want greater than zero, right? Because you're shading in the positive one. So that means all the ones that are positive are the ones that are shaded in like that. Okay, so maybe you get one point now. Now, what about the powers? Well, 3 came from this factor. See how it stays the same. So that means you need an even power on this one. So what do you want to do? 2, 4, 6, 1,078. Okay, 2. And then the ones that, see, this is pair. Let's just do them on it. So if it changes, then you need odd power. So like on this one, you need an odd power. So one, three, five, seven, whatever. Let's, shall we just go with ones and twos yeah. to keep yes. it simple? That's weak. Zero, look, change. So odd power over here changes. So negative two needs an odd power. But over here stays the same. So negative four needs an even power. So shall we do that? Yeah. Box up, that's the answer. Yes, look at the bottom. <laughs> See, so it's just going backwards. So how come you guys can go forward and then kind of go backwards? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> All righty then. And then everybody can do number three. You can solve any equation or any quality on your calculator. Make one side zero, graph it, and look at it. Okay, today is the last lesson in the section right here on absolute values. Sorry, they're complex. Okay, today is absolute values. This is the toughest one. 
So what is the absolute value? Well, let me tell you. This is the definition of the absolute value of x. It's a piecewise function. It's equal to x when x is greater than or equal to 0, negative x when x is less than 0. Now, you guys know how absolute value works? See, look. If the inside, see, if the inside, you guys know how piecewise functions work? You guys did this last year, right? Piecewise function. If the inside of the absolute value is greater than or equal to zero, I'll just say positive, although it's the correct term is not negative, but I'll just say positive. If the inside is positive, you leave it alone. You don't touch it. It just stays x. However, if the inside of the absolute value is negative, then you've got to negate it. If the inside is positive, you leave it alone. If the inside is negative, you negate it. That's not actually correct, do you? Actually, you multiply it by negative 1. It doesn't have the same meaning, but it's, it's more catchy that way. So let, let me show you how this works. What is the absolute value of 3? Now, you guys just know what the answer is, right? It's 3. Because you guys always you're, were taught absolute value, just make it positive, right? But you've got to know why. Otherwise, you can't do the more difficult problems. That's because, is the inside positive or negative? It's positive, so you leave it alone. You don't touch it. However, if the inside is negative, you've got to negate it. And what is the opposite of negative 2? 2. Two. Two. And that's why it always comes out positive. If the inside is positive, you don't touch it. If the inside is negative, you negate it. But the opposite of a negative number is positive. So somebody said something about a thermostat yesterday. Right. So how, how does that work with this? Well, um, he says if the room is warm enough, the thermostat won't turn on. So if it's positive, it won't work. But if the room gets too cold, then the thermostat will turn on. It'll warm the room, so it makes it positive. Okay, I stopped, I stopped this <laughs> Okay, does everybody understand this? If the inside is positive, you leave it alone. If the inside is negative, you negate it. That's how absolute value works. And of course, you guys know what the graph of this looks like, right? See, you guys probably just memorized, yeah? In Algebra 1, the graph is a V. But you've got to know why it's a V. It's a V? Okay, what does the graph of y equal x look like? It looks like this, right? y equal x. But you only graph it when x is greater than or equal to 0. So starting from here, you only graph it over here. When x is greater than or equal to 0, that means to the right of the y-axis. Now, what does the line y equal negative x look like? It looks like this. But we're only going to graph it on this domain when x is less than 0, to the left of the y-axis. And so that's why you get this graph here. See, but in this class, we're not going to just graph this and then move it left, right, up and down like you did in Algebra 1. You're going to, we're going to graph absolute value of more difficult functions. So you've you got to know how absolute value works. Okay, what does this mean? Absolute value of x is equal to a, where a is a number. a is a constant. Like absolute value of x is equal to 2. What does that mean? This is in the notes. Are you guys looking at the notes? We're period three. We don't need stinking notes, Mr. Park. OK, then shall we go straight to the problems? What does this mean? X equals negative a, or x equals a, or x equals plus or minus a then, right? So we'll be going, what? OK, look. Absolute value of x equals 2. What values of x can I plug in here to make it come out true? 2 or? Negative 2, right? So x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. Come on, that's 100 from 1. OK, but what happens if you have absolute value of x is less than a? This is the kind you get on the SAT. You've got to know how to solve this guy. What does this mean? x will be any number between negative a and a, right? And what happens if you have absolute value of x is greater than a? What does that mean? Okay. Oh, you're on in period three. 
Okay, so let's solve a problem. So these are like, if you see a, an inequality or equation with absolute values that looks like one of these, then you just use this, right? So here, this is the kind you get on the SAT. Absolute value of 2x minus 3 is less than 5. No, let's, we're going we're gonna to do it even, even easier. Absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 2. How do you solve that? Does that look like one of these? Yeah, it looks like this one right here. So then, I mean, this is the kind you got last year. How do you solve this? You put x minus 3 in the middle, like that, and then what do you put here and here? Negative, Negative 2 and 2, right? That's just like this, see? You put this, whatever's there, you put that in the middle, and then you put negative a and a there. And then, see, this is easy. How do you solve for x all by itself in the middle? You add 3 to everything. Add 3 to that. Add 3 to that. Tunga. Add 3 to that. Five, there you go, that's how you solve it. But of course, to do the more difficult problems, and you were taught this last year, and in SAT we taught this to you, you should be able to just go from here and go straight to there. You don't even need that middle step. Okay, let's review. How do you graph x's between one and five? Like this, right? What is the midpoint of this interval? What's halfway between 1 and 5? Take the average. 3. Hmm, what does that have to do with the original problem? And what is the distance from the center to the edge? Like that. 2. Hmm, I wonder what that has to do with the problem. This number here is the midpoint, and this number tells you how much to go left and right, right? Come on, every Algebra 2 book has that in it. So, what if, okay, let's do another problem. Absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 5. So when you see this, you think, okay, what's the midpoint? Negative 3, because it's got to be x minus something, right? <coughs> Negative 3 is the midpoint, and then you just go 5 left and 5 right. This number tells you how much to go left and right. So I think we can do this in our head. If we're at negative 3, and I go 5 to the left, where am I at? And then my, if I'm at negative 3 and go 5 to the right, you're at 2. Finished! Mr. Park, can I just do the problem like that? Yes, you can, but I'm trying to teach you something. Like SAT, I've seen this problem on the SAT. Like they give you the interval. X is between, um, I don't know, make up something, 1 and 9. And they have, okay, which of the following expressions re uh, or inequalities represents this? And so if you don't know anything, you just have to solve all five of them until you get this, right? But now we know something. We know the answer is going to be the absolute value of x minus something is less than something. What do I put here? What do I put there? What do I put there? What number goes there? What number goes there? Five. The midpoint. What's halfway between one and nine? Four. Five. Five. If you take the average of 1 and 9, you get 5. And then how far is it from 5 to either edge? 4. And boom, you're done. And then you just pick out the answer. You don't remember these when you took SAT or something? What's SAT? What's summer? Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's the kind you get in Algebra 1 and 2. That's like, come on, that's just nonsense. Okay, let's kick it up a notch. Absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than 3x plus 1. Okay, now how do you solve this? Does, does this look like one of the three forms that I wrote here, but I agree? Yeah, it looks like this one, right? Absolute value of x is greater than a. See, look, absolute value of gorilla is greater than banana. Absolute value of gorilla is greater than banana. That means x is less than negative banana, or x is greater than banana. I should, I should have said gorilla. Okay, so how do you set this problem up? Now, how do you set this problem up? What do I do? X minus 2. So this is like the x, and this is like the a. Just look, just follow that. This is plug and chug, people. Gorilla is less than... Negative banana, or gorilla is greater than 
Banana. And then can you solve each one? I hope so. So 4x is less than 1, x is less than 1, 4. Or negative 2x is greater than 3, x is less than negative 3 halves. I like, to, I like to put the x's on the left when I solve inequalities, but it's up to you. Okay, now you've got to know the difference between or and and. Or means union, and means intersection. So we've got or here, it means union. So if I put all the numbers less than 1 fourth in a box, and then I put all the numbers less than negative 3 halves in a box, what's in the box? Okay, let's draw a number line, period 3. Here is 1 fourth. How do you graph x is less than 1 fourth? These are all the numbers that are less than 1 fourth. How do you graph x is less than negative 3 halves? Everything less than that. So if I throw all of these numbers in a box, and all of these numbers in a box, what's in the box? x is less than 1 fourth. There you go, that's your answer. You have to know the difference between or and and, or this, this, this chapter is going to be bad. Okay, let's look at another one. Absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 4x minus 2. I'm sure these are like two problems straight from your homework, except they just change the numbers. Oh, and we're not going to have another quiz, yeah? So you're just going to have to wait for the test to get. So how do I set this up? Does this look like one of the three forms that I had? Yeah. Okay, so what do you do? You put gorilla in the middle, and then what do you put here? Negative banana and banana over here. <coughs> okay, but see, this is not as easy as the one I showed you before because, see, this thing here is not a number. So can I do this if I want to solve for x? Get, oh, just subtract 3 from everything. So subtract 3, subtract 3, subtract 3. Finished. Why is this not finished? Because you have x's here. You have to solve for x. So no, you see, this one's more complicated. You can't do that. So what do you do? You got to split it up. OK, and I showed you this before, but let's okay, show you again. When you have a is less than b is less than c, this is also in the notes. What, what does that actually mean? This means a is less than b, and b is less than c. The key word there is and, which means intersection. So this means this is less than this, and I'm just going to use the logic and, this is less than that. And this is the key mistake every single year. The students, they don't write the or, they don't write the and, and then when they get to the end, they don't know what to do. That's why I would suggest putting it at the very beginning. Because then you don't know what are you going to do. You're going to take the union or the intersection. You're going to make a choice there. Okay, so negative 5x is less than 1, x is greater than negative 1 fifth. And then if I solve this one, you get negative 3x is less than negative 5, x is greater than 5 thirds. So this is the intersection. What is the intersection of this and this? Now if you have a hard time, I would highly suggest making a number line. x is greater than negative 1 fifth, how do you graph that? How do you graph x is greater than 5 thirds? Where do they overlap? X is greater than, see, if you make a number line, it's easy to see. X is greater than 5 thirds. And there's your answer. So the lesson to be learned here is if it fits one of the three forms, these are the three forms, absolute value of X equal A, absolute value of X is less than A, or absolute value of X is greater than A. If it looks like that, then you should just apply it and use that. However, what if it doesn't fit one of those forms? What do you do? Well, I'm going to show you a technique that works on any absolute value problem. In fact, let's do the same problem again so you can see how it works. This is called the number line method. And when we use the number line method, it's just using the definition of absolute value. So we're going to do the exact same problem, except I'm just going to do the number line method. We make a number line. Now what do I put on the number line? Negative 3. How come you don't put over here the 0 for this one, Mr. Park? Because this is the absolute value. 
So whatever absolute value you have, you put the zero of that on the number line. Negative three. Got it? Because how does absolute value work? If the inside is positive, you leave it alone. If the inside is negative, you negate it. So that's why you figure out the zero, because on one side of zero is positive, and on the other side of zero is negative. That's why you figure out the zero. Now, is negative three part of the solution or not? Plug it in, because it's come out true or false. Oh gosh. If you plug in negative three, you get zero is less than negative 14. Is that true or false? Okay, you got it right this time. So open circle. Now watch what I do. Think of a number bigger than negative three. Doesn't matter. Okay, zero. If I plug it in here, is the inside of the absolute value positive or negative? It's positive, so you leave it alone. And you don't worry about this because there's no absolute value on it. You only look at the things that have that has absolute value. Okay, now think of a number less than negative three. Negative four. If I plug it in for x there, is the inside going to be positive or negative? Negative. So you negate it. See, all I did is use the definition of absolute value. If the inside is positive, you leave it alone. But if the inside is negative, you negate it. You know what negate means? It means multiply by negative one. Okay, now solve each inequality. Solve this one. Negative three x is less than negative five. X is greater than five thirds. So you gotta remember though, this inequality row only holds for this interval right here. So how do you graph x is greater than five thirds only on this interval here? Well, if this is negative three, where would five thirds be? somewhere over here, and greater than means you go to the right, to the right, like that. Okay, now let's do this one. Bring this over, negative 5x is less than 1. x is greater than, something's wrong here. x is greater than, something's wrong here. What did I do wrong? Well, let's just finish it. Right? Did I do, am I doing this correctly? X is greater than negative one fifth. Oh no, this is right. I don't even know what I'm thinking. How do you graph X is greater than negative one fifth only on this interval right here? You cannot because negative one fifth would be over here and then you gotta go to the right. So on this interval there would be nothing. You get it? This inequality you wrote only holds when x is less than negative 3 on this interval. So how can you even graph that when it's like over here and going to the right? You can't. So there's nothing. So whatever's on the number line, that's your answer. And so here you go. That's the answer. See? Yeah. What? It's the happy face method. Yeah. It's robot. It's happy face. I thought it was thermostat. Happy face. No, this, this is the happy face method. This number line one. Okay, explain that to me. Oh, it's just like, um, it's the same thing you did, but then... Um, you just use happy faces. Yeah, you use, um, because you could scribble in five thirds within that section, you put a happy face over there. And because you couldn't, um, because negative one fifth wasn't <laughs> less than negative three, you put a frowny face, and you don't want to scribble in. He <laughs> <laughs> uses lots of happy faces, especially for synthetic division. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so what about Mr. Takagisa? What do you guys do? <laughs> did you have happy face, sad face? Just do it like I did. Whatever! <laughs> well, I guess when you're first learning how to do it, you're like a baby, right? So then you got to make happy faces and sad faces to keep you interested. <laughs> Whatever works, man. I'm not going to make no stinking happy faces and sad faces. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. What time is it? Okay, let's do another one. Now, what happens when you have more than one absolute value? Like, this? what if you have absolute value of x minus two? You want to do greater than or less than? Okay, less than absolute value of three x plus one. You're gonna get the same problems on the quiz, or no, no, I guess on the test, but just gonna change the number. Now, if you see, does that look like one of the forms? Yeah, well it does. It kind of looks like this one. Except, 
This is the A. So you could set it up like this. So you put gorilla in the middle, and what do you put here and here? Negative A and A. You see what I'm doing? It, it does fit that form. And then how do you solve this? You gotta make two separate ones. Don't write this down because this is the bad way to do it. So you would have this is less than this, and this is less than this. And then you gotta solve this one, then you gotta solve this one, which should take some time, and then you gotta take the intersection of the two. Can you see that you really don't wanna do this? No. So, we're gonna use the number line method because it works every single time. This method works every single time. So what do I put on the number line? Two. Now there's two absolute values, so you put two. So you have to put the zero of this and the zero of that, which is negative one third. How come you didn't put the, the, the one, one half? I told you why, because there's no absolute value on this one. You only put it for the absolute value expressions. Now is negative one third part of the solution? Plug it in and does it come out true or false? If I plug in negative one-third, this is what you get. You get seven-thirds is less than zero. Is that true or false? Okay, plug in two. You would get zero is less than seven. That's true. So that's true. Always do those first. Okay, think of a number bigger than two. Three, plug it in. The inside is positive. The inside is positive. So you leave it alone. And you leave it alone. Because they're both positive. If the inside is positive, you leave it alone. Okay, think of a number between here and here. Zero. Zero minus two is negative, so we're going to negate this one, but then zero plus one is positive. So we're going to negate that one and leave that one alone. So this one you negate because the inside is positive, and you leave that one alone because the inside was positive. And you can probably guess what's going to happen here. What happens when you plug in a number smaller than negative one third? They're both negative, so you negate them both. So negate this one, and then negate that one. Is that like the thermostat? No, because then after doing this, I was thinking, oh, that, now I can understand the thermostat. Whatever. OK, solve this one. So if I solve this one, negative 2x is less than 3. x is greater than negative 3 halves. How do I graph x is negative, greater than negative 3 halves only on this interval. No, you can't. It's the whole thing. What? Because how would you graph x is greater than negative 3 halves? You put negative 3 halves on the number line here. It would be here somewhere. And then it goes to the right. So wouldn't that be the whole thing then? Yeah, it's the whole thing. Okay, solve this one. Bring it over. Negative 4x is less than negative 1. x is greater than 1 fourth. How do I graph x is greater than 1 fourth only on this interval right here? You put 1 fourth on the number line, and you go to the right, to the right. You like laughing at other people's misfortune. And then over here, solve this one. 2x is less than negative 3, x is less than negative 3 halves. Did I do that right? <coughs> yeah. Okay, how do you graph x is less than negative 3 halves only on this interval right here? You put negative 3 halves here, and you go to the left, to the left. And then whatever you see on the number line, that's your answer. I still don't get the happy face thing. So whatever you see, so your answer is going to be from negative infinity to negative three halves, and then from one fourth to infinity. So this method, you guys, do you guys understand? This method works all the time. So whatever you have in, inside your absolute value, you put down to zero. So what would happen now? One of tonight's homeworks, there's three absolute values. So, what if you saw something like this minus absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than the absolute value of x minus 3? Then you make a number line. What would go on the number line? Negative 2, 1, and 3. Then you 
just put three things on a number line. So if you have three absolute values, three numbers go on the number line. Now, sometimes though, like in certain cases, you can use a shortcut method. This is a math team secret. Okay, let's do the exact same problem. Watch this. This secret only works in this situation. When you have the absolute value of something is either less than or greater than the absolute value of something. You just, you just have two absolute values, one on each side. You understand? Okay, so I'm going to square both sides. Yeah, but Mr. Park, if you square both sides, don't you have to check your answer? No, that's because both sides are non-negative. That's why, because of the absolute value. So you don't need to check. Whereas, if you had this problem, see, like this side doesn't have an absolute value. You could square both sides, but then you got to check your answers. Now think about that. How would you check your answers when there's like an infinite number of solutions? Because these are inequalities, right? Yeah. It's very difficult, so you don't do that. So since both sides are non-negative, I can square both sides and don't have to worry about checking. Okay, now look at this. Hey, isn't this like last night's homework now? How do you solve inequalities? You make one side zero and you factor. Okay, but watch. Watch what I do. I'm gonna, let's bring it on this side. I'm not going to multiply it out. No, normally you would multiply it out, but I'm not going to multiply it out. You know why? Because that's a difference of squares. This is like a squared. Look, if you have a squared minus b squared, doesn't that factor as a plus b times a minus b? Okay, so I have a squared minus b squared. So if this is a and this is b, what is a plus b? What is that plus that? 4x minus 1. And then what is that minus that? No, that minus that. 2x plus 3. Now, if you just multiplied it all out, made one side 0 and factor it, you would get the same thing. But this is just a shortcut here. Difference of squares. And then look, this is last night's homework. What do I put in the number line? Negative 3 halves. And one form. No, no. How do I know it's plus minus plus? Because I did all my homework last night. And we're looking for greater than zero. So that would be here and here. And isn't that the same answer? Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah, that's a math theme secret. But that's okay. If you don't understand the math theme secret, just do this because this works every single time. Because maybe some of you don't want to know me the math theme secrets, right? Okay, we're done then. Was that confusing? Not really. Good, because then this is the hardest thing about this chapter. So if you get this, then should, everybody should get hundreds on the next test. Okay, we're done. So I'm seeing you tomorrow. We have a quiz. And I think tomorrow we're going to watch Donald Duck in Math the Magic Land. Are we going to do a something? What? <coughs> we're going to go on? No, because it's all reserved already. Some teachers, some teachers are just hogging it. <laughs>